Pleased to be joined in the studio by way of telephone, I should say, the Honorable Jackie Walorski, who is our 2nd District Congresswoman. Good morning. Good morning, Baron. Good morning, Tom. Thank Great you so much. your voices. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. It's a beautiful sunny day in Rochester. I don't know how it is where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not quite like that. But anyway, <laughs> not, not to start out uh, too sadly, but uh, a tragedy in our county over the last uh, couple of days ago. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say good morning to both of you and um, just wanted to let folks in Fulton County know how much that our hearts are with them. And this is uh, just such a senseless tragedy. And I think I, I'm as shocked and, and caught up as everybody else is. Uh, my family, my husband, and I have certainly been praying for the families, um, the parents of those kids, and for everybody down in that neighborhood. And um, I just, I just can't imagine. I, I can't tell you that, you know, that's all the conversation has been. And everywhere I go, I find people talking about it. And I just wanted to let um, all the uh, folks in Fulton County know that this state, this district, and this nation is praying for them. And our thoughts are certainly with them. And I saw that the uh, memorial service is coming up tonight, just a prayer service for healing in the community. And I'm just so grateful and so thankful that Fulton County has um, wrapped around these families as they have and and trying to just, um, you know, ask the Lord for comfort uh, to these people. So my heart just goes out to them, and I just wanted um, folks in Fulton County to know that we're standing with them, we're praying with them. And um, we're going to continue to do that until this community is healed and these uh, parents have a long road to go. But we're just holding them up in prayer. Thank you so much for that, because uh, it has been the obviously the conversation topic for the last two or oh, three days. And it's, uh, just, what a it's, just, uh, it's just it's just sad. I mean, that's the only way you can it approach is. it, I guess, you know. So and of course, uh, school corporations. Now we had occasion to talk with Mrs. Vance this morning from Rochester and they're re-looking at their bus routes and things like that. So that's a positive to come out of it, but yet still a very negative situation. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and, you know, there's just no words to, to talk about anybody understanding what those families are going through. And so at times like that, you know, I'm just grateful that we can, you know, take it to a much higher power and pray and just believe that the Lord is going to comfort them and, you know, get them through these days. Jackie, the National Transportation Safety Board is uh, in the area and investigating. Since they are a federal agency and you are the pertinent uh, representative, will they stay in contact with your office and let you know what's going on? We will be in touch with them, absolutely. And, I, and again, I'm glad that they're uh, coming. I'm glad they're on the way. There's a lot of unanswered questions. And I think that it's in times like that when you, you know, bring in experts, you wait and see what they fact find and then, you know, go from there. But I'm very grateful that they're actually um, gonna, going to come up and, and start put, putting facts together. But we will be in communication with them, yes. Are you in the district now through the election? Oh, yeah. I haven't left <laughs> Indiana. I haven't left Indiana uh, since the beginning of um, the month. So it's you know, very busy time. We're busy anyway whenever we're in the district. And, you know, we're always laser focused on getting out to, um, you know, folks that we need to see. Um, you know, we have an open door policy in our office. And my uh, district director just turned over 200,000 miles on his car that we drive. So I'm in the district. And so it, he had just told me one, he told me one day this past week, that he turned 200,000 miles, and then it was like the next morning his car wouldn't start. And so we ended up in a rental driving the district. It was just kind of ironic. But <laughs> no, we're, we're all over the place. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, really, the other thing that's been nice about being back in the district on the road is that we really haven't had super bad weather. And right. um, it's been easy. It's been safe traveling. Um, the colors are – I can't remember a, in the last couple of years more – beautiful color than we've had um in these past couple of weeks and so i'm always grateful for that it's just you know you get places um you stay on time and so you it's just a much more efficient use of time rather than dealing with uh and i'm not even going to say the word of what's coming next but you know we had a little bit of ice up here but thank god we made it through halloween with uh no bad weather no snow um speaking of which and i know you're going to hate to hear me say this but let's assume you Mm -hmm. win and uh Mm -hmm. 
you have built up some seniority in Congress, have you not? And would your district be able to look at a Jackie Walorski that sits at the head of committees? Does that still work on seniority? And uh, what are your thoughts? Because what a lot of people forget is you're going to be electing new leadership in your party in the House, are you not? Sure. But you know what, Baron? I mean, I, my thoughts are not there. I have no idea what happens with the House. I have no idea the outcome of this election, nor does anybody else. It's just a very, um, you know, it's just a very tight year, and um, I'm pretty focused. I'm laser focused on just doing the kinds of things that um, I do in fighting for people and fighting for Hoosiers. And grateful to be in the district. We've had unbelievable amount of just great meetings on things that have come out of Congress just in the past couple of months. For example. Yesterday I had a, um, a lady in my office who was kind of like built a niche around uh, helping folks bridge poverty and getting them into jobs and being there as a support and wanting to network and wanting to partner. And then the next person that came in my office was a police officer who is uh, involved in uh, drug enforcement, narcotics division, those kinds of things. And you know, he was looking for additional doors and additional um, ways they can continue to work on this fight against opioids. and. Um, the president had just signed the bill last week. They had a, another bill of mine in it that um, you know brings a lot more money, research, you know, and those kinds of things to alternatives for doctors to get out of the you know opioid business where not necessary and looking for safe alternatives. So those are the kind of things that really excite me because those are the kind of things that you know we work on a long time to get these kinds of bills passed and this um, HR six that passed. Uh, last weekend and the president signed, you know, was a huge bipartisan effort on both sides, the House and the Senate, because we've heard the American people and the American people have said, we've got to get out of this business. We have to stop this. So those are the kind of things that really excite me and are so gratifying to have just, you know, a small part in setting our nation free from this unbelievable amount of drug addiction. Well, just so you know, I'd love to be able to say I interviewed a Speaker of the House by the name of Jackie, but we'll leave that aside for the moment. Um, oh, that is not happening. I can promise you that. Just so I can oh, tell you the truth. That's not up right now where I live. That's, that's not even in the realm of possibility, so I would say uh, no. Okay. Well, uh, one thing we are running into, and since you're on a, uh, at the federal level, you could probably answer this. Uh, counties in Indiana are trying to come up with money to build new jails, speaking of the opioid epidemic and things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, is this a problem across the country, or does Indiana just seem to have most of the problem, or what can we do to reduce that burden for them? Sure. No, it's, so this is not just an Indiana problem, but I will, again, say that you know I'm grateful to be in the state of Indiana with my fellow Hoosiers because we lead the way in this country in so many different types of things. Obviously, we do when it comes to job production and job creation, and, you know, uh, in tax reform and putting people to work and that kind of a thing. But one of the issues that we have right now is we have a, a massive shortage in our labor force, and that's not uh, just Indiana either. Um, we have 10,000 jobs available every single day in this district and nobody to fill them. And I'm saying that to say this. One of the things that's going to be coming up on the federal docket, uh, either in lame duck or probably next year in 2019, is this whole concept of um, – uh, criminal justice reform. The criminal justice reform, as an agenda item of the president's as well, I think is going to um, play well here in the state of Indiana. Um, the governor has led the initiative at the state level for the last couple of years on ways to look more at specialized kind of programs when it comes to crime, for example, especially with drug crime. You know, in Indiana, we have a lot of VA courts that are no longer sending veterans through the regular court system, but a court system set up to be very attuned to getting to the root of some of the problems and not just sending veterans who have lost their way on hard times, um, you know, needing some kind of assistance and ending up in jail, committing some kind of a crime. So I think when we look at these very narrow programs that are working in places like Indiana, we've, you know, we're going to be at that front uh, leadership position again, I think when you look at 2019 on the whole concept of what are we doing with criminals? What are we doing with uh, low level offenders? What are we doing when it, when it takes into account drugs? <clears throat> and we've passed so much, so much legislation with a lot of money attached to it to send it down to the states and to the front lines. I really believe what we'll see next year coming led by the federal 
uh, system and, and led by the administration is a different way of thinking and a way to put dangerous people behind bars where they where they need to be, staying hard on criminals and criminal activity and no tolerance plan, but finding other ways that work as well to help and get people off of this addiction and off of a life of crime. You mentioned uh, the job, the uh, labor force issues that we have. Our governor here in Indiana, one of his uh, priorities since he got elected has been to educate and inform and try to deal with the coming impact of automation and robotics, artificial intelligence and all that. And the White House recently had a summit, and I think it was chaired by Ivanka. I could be wrong, uh, but they recently had a summit on this, and uh, both the governor and the White House were telling us that there's going to be a lot of job changeover. Not all of them will be lost, and new ones will be created. But especially in the uh, non-skilled labor force, there's going to be quite a bit of turnover when it comes to this. Uh, what are we doing, and what uh, do we have any uh, sense of priority and what different things we want to do to deal with that? Because it's coming whether we like it or not. Absolutely. We have to keep working to make sure Hoosiers have every opportunity to find quality jobs with good pay. So one of the things we've done on the um, Ways and Means Committee is, basically in line with the administration and their goals as well, is to make sure that we stay on that front line of innovation. And if you think about this district alone, we're one of the largest manufacturing districts in the country. So I would tell you, and you know, we're almost at full employment. So when it comes to hiring, it's the biggest challenge right now. We've had several hearings in uh, D.C., Ways and Means Committee, and other committees as well, examining that issue of the jobs gap. The difference between businesses demand for workers and then millions of workers not in the workforce in the labor force now so we are on the front edge and we've had a lot of conversations as well with the governor um some of the things that uh we can do and i think you know um when it comes to um labor force issues and retraining and those kinds of things we have a lot of that already starting but i think in your to your point with the governor's agenda We'll work hand-in-hand with him and stay on that front line of innovation. We'll take ideas that work in Indiana, and we'll take them to the federal level. We'll look at different ways to integrate education into local communities. And some of this stuff we've already started. We get a lot of requests from employers, large employers, that want to be hands-on involved and a part of the solution. And I can't tell you how many connections we've been able to make with local superintendents of schools and um, uh, job creators in the, in the areas of those districts where they live. A lot of partnerships are now developing where the superintendent of the schools will go in, uh, they'll bring some parents in, they'll bring the uh, job creators in, uh, large companies, small companies, and they have already begun partnerships here in our district where these kids then graduate directly with some kind of certification from some kind of a trade that they've been able to bring into their school and they walk right into the light, right into the labor force in those communities. So it's just been a phenomenal thing to see. We'll see that on a much, a much bigger level. I think when we start talking about this in bill form in 2019, but, but Indiana has really led the way and we've seen, um, many, many connections and a lot. And this isn't, you know, this isn't creating like a hundred jobs, Baron, but it will in the future. I mean, as this becomes integrated and a commonplace thing in our schools, We'll see a lot of companies taking this into their own hands and saying, we're just going to raise up and train up workers, and they are, and it's working here in our district. Second District Congresswoman Jackie Walorski is our guest this morning on WROI, and we don't want to belabor the interview, but at the same time, I did want to ask you about the campaign, because it seems like from listening to ads, from watching ads, from talking with people, the two main topics are immigration and health care. Would you agree with that? Would you disagree with that? What do you think? You know what, I think that, I mean, issues have come from all over the place, and obviously they do, and this is, you know, a time when everybody um, should be involved and should vote and should understand that election has consequences and those kinds of things. But, you know, we've really been, um, we have been fighting for Hoosiers at every corner for, um, you know, every time that I am grateful enough to be able to say that I am the congresswoman from the Indiana 2nd District, and we'll continue to fight for those. Everybody has needs, and they're not all the same. You know, um, we found just over the last, you know, uh, couple of months, you know, the needs in our district don't go on vacation just because there's a campaign. 
So we spend our time so laser focused on making sure that, you know, veterans have what they need and, you know, CEOs who are looking for networks and connections, we can make those, making sure that we are, you know, in the, in the, all over the community and we have been, you know, fighting for jobs, fighting for, um, you know, ways for every single Hoosier to be able to connect to the American dream. And, you know, one of the things that we find out during this period of time is that, you know, there's, it, the folks do have their ears on and they are listening. And I am grateful for that because I think that, you know, an issue to one person um, may be different than an issue to another person. And we, we've made it our commitment. I mean, it's my passion, Tom, to make sure that whatever that issue is, that it doesn't get lumped into something else, and, but that we take care of every individual Hoosier. And we really make sure that we do and that we, collect, we connect them to solutions. You know, they can't wait till the election's over to have somebody help them. We're helping them now, and we're laser-focused on that. And, you know, elections have consequences. They are what they are. But at the end, my commitment is, you know, absolutely fixing every problem that we are encountered with. And, you know, we're not – you can't do 100 percent. You can't fix everybody's issues. But you can be there, and you can be the one advocating and fighting for every Hoosier in this district. And that's really where we've been, what we've done, and what we'll continue to do. Another busy day for Jackie Walorski. You better believe it. I'm waiting for the sun to come up. It was, yeah. a little, it was a little misty this morning. I took my husband to work, and it was a little misty as I was coming back with windshield wipers. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> as always, we certainly appreciate your time. Thanks for what you do for the district, and thanks for visiting with us this morning. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Tom and Barry, and have a great weekend. And when you get by through the Rochester area, please stop in and say hello. I will. All right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, Take care. Jackie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Again, Indiana 2nd District Congresswoman Jackie Walorski. I, th- I thought the conversation you started was uh, kind of different. I mean, we talk about a lot of different things. I ask her about immigration, health care, whatever. But you don't think about jobs in the future as much as we probably should, and we don't pay enough attention to it. What's it going to be like five years from now? What's mm-hmm. it going to be like 10 years from now? And I think the point she was making, Indiana is trying to take a leadership position in all of that. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is from one of my heroes, Edward R. Murrow. He says, difficulty is the excuse that the future never accepts. And uh, I think it's true. And the governor is saying that by the middle of the century, it could be, in fact, within the next couple of decades, he's putting it at 47%, the number of jobs that currently exist. This White House summit, I believe they said that it could be as low as eight years before we get to that point. I don't think it's going to happen that fast. But automation and artificial intelligence and robotics are going to completely change us. Well, yes, I, you're right. You're right. And, and that is that no doubt that's coming down the line. Is that different, though, from, let's say, 20 years ago? Because we have jobs today that 20 years ago we never saw happening. Uh, the better comparison would be 100 years ago. Okay, as Fair we enough. went from people riding a horse to get to some place <laughs> to driving a car. Exactly. Uh, the guy working in the buggy whip factory no longer has a job. Uh, we had just discovered that those black rocks that we could pick up off the ground and <laughs> dig out of it actually did something besides lay there. And uh, you had people who were actually flying for the first time. So well, uh, you, that's you, what I would compare yeah, right. to. And, you know, telephone operators, you can go through exactly. kind of any kind of any, exactly. any kind of workstation like that, basically. Yeah, there's entire comedy bits right. by Lily Tomlin that don't get done anymore <laughs> because operators don't exist anymore. Uh, but, yeah, you are going to see some massive changes. And uh, Jackie and the governor right. and a couple of others I could name have uh, – we've talked to her about this sure. before. It's not like it's, it's something right. unknown to her. And, yeah, it's coming down the road, and it's going to completely upend a lot of – suppositions that we have now. Exactly right.